again here at six and then covered at four and a half here. Covered at four and a half there. So six ticks on the sell and a minus one on the sell. And that's a max short trade. So that's a max short trade at the top edge here for that uh, bit of sell side. I'm sell side S&P anyway because of uh, because that's what I thought was going to happen. We, we did finally run the stops. Do you see what we drew this in for you guys? So I suggested that they would try and run the stops to the top side to get the liquidity on the short side. And then they would reverse it out of that area. So I was a big seller actually up here myself personally. And we've made um, a fair amount of cash on this, by the way, guys. A fair amount of cash on this. Did anybody else uh, sell the top edge? Did anybody join me? I did draw the chart in for you guys. I told you what I was expecting to. I told you what I was expecting to happen. It looked a bit funny at the time, but uh, no, no, I'm quite happy with the. Quite happy with how it comes, guys. Quite happy. Max. Pretty much nailed it, didn't he? Max was on 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 point with the sell trade. It's just that uh, pesky little one tick buy that uh, cost them. We could always massage the figures and say that the sell was a one tick winner, and then the second sell was a five tick winner because it still comes out as six. It still comes out the same at the end of the day, but uh, we'd still with a hundred percent winners if we did that, didn't we? I could make it up. I could make it up. Just for the hell of getting a hundred percent, but no, that's not my style, guys. That's not my style. If Max is the loser, Max is the loser. The good news is that the liquidity has picked back up again, guys. So that uh, the panic drop in liquidity really was just the three o'clock news. Um, the liquidity has reversed back up again, which has uh, just taken the panic off um, for that uh, time being. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit more confident about bottom edges again, guys. So um, the way the algorithms are behaving, my next read is that the market will squeeze south to pick up uh, buyers. And uh, the algorithms are now looking for those buyers at the bottom edge. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to be watching for the opportunity to squeeze the price south out of here. And uh, we'll try and pick up some stops. And I'll be happy to now take part in that buy side bottom edge here if we get the upper chance today. Short side for me, top edge was at uh, was at sixes. We got down to a low price of ninety sixes for ten ticks. Uh, but I'm now expecting the market to be bullish. The way that the algorithms are behaving, I think there's a definite bullish feel. However, it can change, and we might end up selling some liquidity into the tens. But we'll see what happens if we get there. I'll give you a shout if I see anything, guys. I'll give you a shout if I see that storyline evolving. Anybody like any of the bonds? We've got a squeeze top edge. We've got a squeeze bottom edge. Did anybody like any of it? Anybody like any of it? Anybody got any of it?
the uh, inflation break-evens were certainly bullish bonds. Uh, that's for sure. Interestingly enough, with oil prices higher, you'd have imagined that they might be a little bit more bearish bonds. But uh, nope, the inflation break-evens, according to their opening play this morning at the US Open, certainly suggested that there was a bullish element to bond trading. Um, because the tips opened lower, certainly the five-year uh, strip opened, certainly suggesting that there was a bullish, uh, a bullish slant to the tips, and certainly the 30-year not quite as bullish, but certainly bullish. So uh, definitely there's a buyer bonds at the bottom edge as well, guys, a buyer of bonds at the bottom edge. Now, in terms of Forex, you'd probably agree with that because there was a very strong Forex divergence. You might remember our conversation earlier about the Forex market. Uh, being uh, being uh, bullish, that's why we never sold the top edge at 04s, and that's the reason I didn't sell the 04s on the retest, again, that we did uh, pass on that bit of business, uh, certainly for that reason. But uh, in terms of the absolutes, the absolutes were incredibly bullish on the news. So uh, if you like the news about what was happening, I think probably everybody's long with me on the treasuries at the bottom edge. Does anybody disagree? You might be saying, well, the oil is the problem, isn't it? The oil is the problem, I must admit. The oil is a bit of a, a question mark about what the hell is going on just now because oil shouldn't be trading at $75.30, that's for sure. But I think we've had uh, a couple of impactors that have caused the oil price just to hold on to their bids, not specifically oil, but simply because of the way the dollars behaved. The weakness in the dollars caught the oil buyers Nice buy rally, by the way, 74.30s up to 75.30s was worth a full thousand dollar profit up to that price. So, you know, I really like this buy trade here. Uh, we'll go through the reasons why. So the first thing that we're going to be wanting to get a read on is, is going to be the uh, the cash open, of course, 230. We're going to get a read on the tips markets. So at 230, this is the read we get on the tips markets. The first thing you'll be able to recognize is that bond prices at this level are just a little bit above where bond prices were at the close here. So there's the closing bell there, there's bond prices here. So it's just a little tick above that price. But at the same time, you'll see that the tips markets actually are significantly lower at the open, suggesting, of course, lower inflation. So obviously, lower inflation for me in terms of a bond trade is buying bonds at lower prices, buying bonds at lower prices. So that's what we're going to be expecting to be able to do, right? So there's the buy trade. Secondly, if we look at the dollar, we can see that the dollar is very weak. Buying bonds at bottom edges makes an awful lot of sense. So buying bonds at bottom edges makes a huge amount of sense. The sell makes no sense at all. So that's two out of two. When we look at the absolutes, this is a very powerful story. The absolutes are very, very, very strongly bullish. Three out of three bonds, guys. Three out of three bonds. So, the S&P started to become bullish, four out of four, starting to become bullish bonds. It started to sell off the top edges, remember, in the cash open, and it was holding this balance here. So that's four out of four. The only reason why the bond was looking a bit dubious as a buy was this oil price here. You know, that rally in oil prices, obviously, is probably the reason we got the low price on bonds. But if you've got any desire or any thoughts that oil prices are perhaps a little bit toppy up here, then, of course, you can dis discount the oil price from your calculations. So as far as I'm concerned, there's about four out of four good reasons to buy bottom edge without even looking at volume, without looking at order flow. There's four out of four good reasons to buy bottom edge bonds. And obviously, buying the bottom edge bond into the 2021s, it's rallied back up to a 0-1 print. That's a good trade, by the way. That's a very good trade. 